Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video, we're going to go over questions 10 and 11 uh, from section 3 of the Blue Booklet. So this is a question about pressures and Rolf's law. Um, I've copied out the equation here, and question 10 says, a consequence of Rolf's law would be what? Okay, so I think that the best thing to, to do, first of all, for this question is to really get an idea of what pressure is and how that affects um, solubility and boiling points. So the answers here um, say whether or not the solute would be more or less soluble, or if the boiling point would be higher or lower. So how does pressure affect the boiling point? Well, a higher pressure would cause an increase in the boiling point. And so if you dissolve something into a solvent, produce a solution. Because we're multiplying here, uh, we can see that the solution's pressure would be higher than the just plain um, pressure of the solvent, which means that when you dissolve something into the solvent, the pressure of the solution increases. If the pressure of the solution increases, that means the boiling point of the solution is going to be higher than that of the pure solvent. So that gives us an answer uh, for number 10 of D. 11 then says a negative deviation from Rolf's law is said to occur if the vapour pressure above a solution is less than the predicted value. So this is where um, you could calculate in theory um, what the solution would, the pressure of the solution would be. Um, but actually we end up with a reduction uh, in what we would expect, um, or it'd be lower than what we would expect. Um, and that's what they're calling here um, a negative deviation. So why would that be? Um, so again, let's just think about what pressure is. Say so you've got a container like this here and you've got some gas in it. So I'll just draw in some molecules like this. Pressure is going to be the force exerted on the boundary of this container by the gas itself. So these molecules are going to be bouncing around off the um, surface, or the inner surface of this container, and that pressure, that force, um, is going to um, change here. So the equation here says that if you dissolve something into the solvent, the pressure of the solution would increase, which makes sense. But what if um, you had a lower pressure than you'd expect? Why would this be? So let's go through all the different answers and see what this um, might give us. A says a solvent vapour is not an ideal gas. So this expects you to know what an ideal gas is and how that affects pressure laws. Why do you think of this in terms of pressure is an ideal gas is sort of uniform and the pressure throughout the entire gas on average should be fairly uniform. And what that means then is, well, for the context of this question, would that affect the pressure um, that you would expect if it's not an ideal gas, if it's not uniform? Well, say you have a region of high pressure here and low pressure here, um, you're going to get movement of gas from one area to another and it'll even out. Gas will move from high pressure into low pressure by diffusion and it'll all even out and average out um, at one uniform pressure. Um, so it's not going to cause a lower pressure overall. So it's not going to be A. B and C talk about the mass of the solvent molecule relative to the solute molecule. Um, there's no reason why that would affect the pressure that the gas is going to be exerting. Um, so then D says, what if the solute molecules are strongly attracted to the solvent molecules? So I'm going to draw some arrows in and explain why this um, could work. So say you've got these molecules that are attracted to each other instead of being able to just bounce around freely. And that means that the energy that they um, that they have is going to be less because they're going to be attracted to each other instead of just being able to move around freely and they're not going to be hitting into the container. And so that's going to reduce the force that they're exerting on the boundaries of their container. And because that's pressure, that's going to cause a reduction in pressure. Um, so that's a little bit of a complicated question, but I think it's quite intuitive if you know um, how pressure works. So the answer for number 11 then is going to be D. If they were attracted to each other, they're going to um, sort of be drawn together as opposed to just being able to move freely and hit into the sides of the container, um, reducing the pressure. So that was questions 10 and 11 of section 3 of the Blue Book. I hope that helped. Thanks for watching.